8. Boeing 747 jumbo jets lifted in the air by a single Chinese-built machine. Until recently, the world's heaviest lifts depended on Western engineering. Now, every record is shattered by cranes so massive, moving just one takes over 200 trucks. China did not just break the rules, they rewrote them. So how did one country seize the crown in super heavy lifting? The true story behind these machines reveals a race for power that has only just begun. At the threshold of super heavy lifting stands the Sany SCT Pre 6000 TM. This twin boom crawler crane redefined what was possible when it debuted in 2011, carrying a maximum lifting capacity of 3,600 metric tons enough to raise structures that once seemed immovable. The SCC-36000TM is engineered around a parallel lattice boom system designed for the precise demands of third-generation nuclear power plant construction. Its main boom configuration, paired with advanced hydraulic controls, allows it to hoist prefabricated modules weighing thousands of tons with exacting accuracy. The crane's load moment reaches an imposing 88,000 ton meters, a measure of the immense force it can safely control at height and distance. Sani developed this machine to meet China's surge in modular nuclear construction, where entire reactor domes and containment vessels are assembled on the ground and lifted in a single operation. This approach cuts risk and time, but requires a tool of extraordinary strength and stability. The SCC-36000TM's twin boom design delivers that, with a counterweight system and structural steel backbone that rivals the weight of a destroyer. For the first time, a domestically built Chinese crane could handle the heaviest nuclear modules without waiting for foreign equipment. The SCC-36000TM set the standard for what would come next, establishing a new baseline for megaproject lifting power. Rising above the competition is the XCMG XGC-88000, a machine that redefined what a crawler crane could achieve when it launched in 2012. With a rated lifting capacity of 4,000 metric tons, it became the backbone of China's most ambitious industrial sites. But the XGC-88000 didn't just impress on paper, it built its reputation in the field. In 2013, this crane performed a lift that would echo through engineering circles worldwide. At the Ningxia Coal to Chemical Complex, the XGC-88000 hoisted a propylene tower weighing 2,155 tons to a height of over 360 feet. That single operation compressed months of work into hours, setting a new benchmark for efficiency and scale in petrochemical construction. The challenge was not just the weight, but the unpredictable winds swirling across the open site. Engineers deployed auxiliary cranes as live stabilizers, holding the tower steady while the main boom inched it skyward. The entire crew paused for 17 tense minutes, waiting for a break in the gusts before resuming the lift. When the tower finally locked into place, the XGCA-8000 had proven that Chinese engineering could outmatch the world's best. For years, this crane was the undisputed titan of the sector, a symbol of XCMG's relentless drive and a clear sign that the era of waiting for foreign equipment was over. At the summit of modern heavy lifting stands, the Sani SCC-45000A, a machine that redefines what's possible on land. Released in 2021, this crawler crane is engineered for extremes. Its maximum lifting capacity reaches an astonishing 4,500 metric tons, roughly 4,960 US tons. That's enough raw power to hoist eight fully loaded Boeing 747s in a single lift. The main boom alone stretches 394 feet, and with its luffing jib, the crane's reach extends to nearly 690 feet, taller than most city skyscrapers. To keep such a giant grounded, the counterweight system surpasses 2,200 tons, arranged in modular blocks and precisely positioned by hydraulic arms. But the scale of the SCC-45000A is measured not just in steel and reach, but in logistics. Moving this machine to a job site is an operation unto itself. Over 200 trucks are needed to haul its components, booms, crawlers, counterweights, control cabins, across highways and bridges, sometimes crossing provinces under police escort and strict permitting. Each move requires route surveys, bridge simulations, and even negotiations with local communities as the convoy rolls through the night. 
The SCC-4500A isn't simply a bigger crane, it's a statement of ambition and determination. Built to serve the most demanding projects, offshore wind farms, nuclear power plants, and Belt and Road megasites, it stands as the ultimate tool in China's arsenal. At this level, the machine itself becomes a symbol, not just of lifting power, but of a nation's determination to solve problems on a scale the world has never seen. The question isn't just how high or how heavy, but why China needed to build a crane like this at all. Factories, power plants, and entire city districts began rising across China at a pace never seen before. By the early 2000s, the scale of construction was staggering, thousands of mega-projects breaking ground each year, from sprawling petrochemical complexes to new generation nuclear plants and wind farms stretching to the horizon. These were not built the old way, with countless workers assembling steel and concrete piece by piece high above the ground. Instead, a new method took hold. Modular construction. Giant components, sometimes entire reactor domes or distillation columns weighing over a thousand tons, were fabricated on the ground, then needed to be lifted and set in place in a single, precise motion. The challenge was simple to describe, but daunting in practice. Lifting modules of this size safely required machines that did not yet exist in China. For a time, the answer was to import super cranes from Germany or the US. But those machines were few, expensive, and often unavailable when needed most. Projects stalled, costs soared, and schedules slipped because a single piece of equipment was stuck overseas or tied up on another job. In this environment, demand for homegrown heavy lift solutions exploded. Super cranes became essential tools, not just for prestige, but for keeping the country's industrial engine running at full speed. The need to lift ever bigger modules, faster and more reliably, drove Chinese companies and engineers to push beyond what any foreign supplier could offer. China's ability to build super heavy cranes at record speed starts deep in its industrial foundations. No other country can match the scale or integration of China's heavy manufacturing ecosystem. The country produces more steel than the next 10 nations combined, with plants like Bao Steel and An Steel supplying the high tensile alloys needed for crawler cranes that weigh thousands of tons. This vertical integration stretches from raw ore to finished machine, giving Chinese manufacturers control over every step. Sani and XCMG don't just assemble cranes, they command a supply network that includes casting giants, forging specialists, and precision machining yards all operating within a day's drive of the main factories. This level of control is often compared to baking a cake when you own not just the bakery, but the flour mill, sugar plantation, and chicken farm. It's a system that slashes costs and shaves months off development cycles. Layered on top of this is state-backed financing, special bonds, tax incentives, and direct subsidies tied to national industrial goals. The government's five-year plans starting in 2001, specifically called out super heavy lifting as a strategic priority, unlocking resources that let companies invest for the long haul. Vision at the top mattered too. In 2001, Sani founder Liang Wengen visited a Liebherr site in Germany and saw firsthand how advanced modular cranes set the pace for nuclear projects. He returned to China and immediately rewrote Sani's research and development orders, demanding not just world-class capacity, but modularity and safety systems rivaling anything in the West. Liang's directive, backed by the full weight of China's industrial machine, set the stage for a new era of rapid, homegrown innovation. Zhang Jinfeng spent 10 nights in the cab of his prototype, refusing to leave the test yard as the XGC-8000 faced its final ordeal. The hook block, a forged steel giant weighing as much as a city bus, creaked under the trial load. Engineers watched instruments for signs of fracture, knowing a single miscalculation could end years of work in a split second. Zhang missed the birth of his second child and the entire spring festival, unwilling to step away until the crane survived. When the test finally succeeded, he broke down in tears, the relief as heavy as the load itself. That level of sacrifice became a hallmark of China's homegrown engineering drive pushing machines and people to the limits to prove capability on their own soil. But validation at home brought new complications abroad. 
In 2013, United States manufacturer Mani Towak filed a complaint with the International Trade Commission, accusing Sani of infringing a critical counterweight patent. Emails surfaced of Sani engineers referencing files from a former Manitowoc employee. After two years of legal battle, the commission sided with Manitowoc, blocking Sani's crawler cranes from the United States market. The settlement terms were confidential, but the message was clear. China's rapid catch-up had crossed a line that Western rivals would fiercely defend. While courtroom fights played out in Washington, Chinese cranes were quietly rolling onto global belt and road sites. In Sri Lanka's Hambantota port, procurement records bundled Sani and XCMG equipment into the financing package, ensuring that every major lift relied on Chinese hardware and service teams. This export loop became self-reinforcing. Each overseas project offered proof of reliability, making it easier to win the next contract. The domestic tool had become a geopolitical lever, its reach extending far beyond China's borders. Right now, China's super cranes are reshaping not just skylines, but global power in heavy industry. As these giants become the backbone of tomorrow's infrastructure, control over such engineering force means influence far beyond construction. The world's foundations are shifting, one colossal lift at a time.